when I got into the radio business, never used jigs, never had any desire to use jigs. Why would I do that? But with Mr. Cook, he demands that I come up with a nickname. And I very quietly said jigs. And of course, he couldn't hear me because I was almost whispering, speak up. I can't hear you. I remember it vividly. He had pounded his fist on the desk. I thought he had hurt himself or broken the desk. And he, he said, damn it, you've had a nickname. I've had a nickname. My brother's had a nickname. Everybody's had a nickname. Now, what was yours? Jiggs, speak up. I can't hear you. Jiggs, Jiggs McDonald. Marvelous. John Kenneth Jiggs McDonald was born in November 1938 in Galt, Ontario, two hours outside of Toronto. As a kid, I was just fascinated by radio. After school, late afternoon, I would listen to intently and uh, say, someday that's going to be me. The high school I went to had a radio show, and I was never good enough to, to have a role on it, but I could be a reporter. Jiggs fine-tuned his radio presence and eventually got a job with a radio station about 120 miles away in Lindsay, Ontario. It was there that he got an unexpected opportunity. All of a sudden, we have a little brouhaha, as we say in hockey. We have a little scuffle between two of the announcers, and one is thrown down the stairs at the radio station and then fired the next day. I'd never, <laughs> never done a hockey game on the air. Over the next uh, year or so, play-by-play -play became the one thing that I enjoyed most. This is the year of the great expansion. This year, for the first time, the league will be composed of 12 teams. In 1966, the NHL announced its expansion, and McDonald saw an opportunity with the Los Angeles Kings. With me tonight, number 11 of the Los Angeles Kings, Lowell McDonald, one of the few uh, maritime-born and raised hockey players in the National Hockey League. Lowell in the back of my mind, I have to admit that my thinking was, they'll probably hire somebody from the American Hockey League. Instead, I get a letter after my initial application. They're down to a certain number of finalists. I'm one of them. McDonald began as the voice of the Kings for the inaugural 1967 season. Off the stick of Cheevers, the stick hand at least. Joyelle centers the play, scores! I had never called a game on television. I have to admit that after the first couple of games, I thought, what am I doing? How? I hope this is working. Whiting slaps it out. Barada, blue line, shoots, his rebound, right on, and score! The Kings have tied it up again. Jig spent five years with the LA Kings, and in 1972 left to work for the Atlanta Flames. Just as the team moved to Calgary in 1980, the reigning Stanley Cup champion New York Islanders needed a new play-by-play -play announcer. That's up a screen in front, then his shot is blocked. Goes back to LaFontaine, turns, lets it go, he scores! I remember thinking to myself, boy, boy, oh boy, because the reputation with the Islanders was that it was a graveyard for broadcasters. I'm Jiggs McDonald, I think, along with Ed Westfall. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year to you, Jiggs. And thank I, I you remember a couple of friends saying, what are you doing, McDonald? Uh, you, 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 can't, you can't live there. You can't exist there. It's, well, they win the Stanley Cup again in 1981, 82, and 83. And the Islanders have won the Stanley Pretty good run, and I think that's what really established my career as uh, not a bad broadcaster, you know, e easy enough to listen to. Jiggs established himself as a trusted voice in the hockey world, calling over 3,000 games during his 50-year career. Ladies and gentlemen, Jiggs McDonald. As the Kings' 50th season approached, they saw an opportunity to bring back the Hall of Fame broadcaster for one last call. I wanted to familiarize myself with the play, the players, pronunciations, who was playing with who. <laughs> nice that they just leave you alone in the corner here, huh? Yeah. Are you working tonight? No. No. At my age. You know, I, like you. you. I do broadcast class. once in a while. I play once in a while. I play <laughs> once. Now things begin to tighten a little bit, and you say, "Oh, I hope I can pull this off." I, you know, I'm not sure that I'm ready for this. Jigs, do you want to do it again for any reason? Are you okay with that? I think we're okay. I've got a feel for where uh, for, where Jimmy's going. All right. And uh, I'll get him there. Excellent. As quick as I can. Are you I can able get to you, put I the, uh, the mic on your, the uh, I could tell. He told me right away. He said, "I'm nervous. I'm really nervous." And that kind of surprised me. Jigs. You go tonight. You go. You do whatever you want tonight. Oh, no, it's the Jimmy. It's the Jimmy Fox show. I'm just here to get you on and on. 
but don't change anything. We're, you're here for us tonight. It's only one game, but he was thinking he had to put the entire season into one game because he didn't want to make mistakes. The original voice of the Kings, a Hall of Famer, over 3,000 games called. He's with Jim Fox Jigs. It is truly thrilling to have you here tonight, and let's have a great call. Patrick, thank you. Still trying to get one right after 3,000 games, but maybe tonight's the night. If you don't have the a LA concern or tenseness or butterflies, then, you, then you're not prepared. You're, you're not going into it full bore, ready to, to do the best job you can. Carter looks for somebody in front. And man, there they score! They flipped it in, and the Kings get the opening goal of the game, and that's been a good thing all season long as Dustin Brown gets the power play goal. If you just show up and put your notes on the, the table and uh, say, okay, here we go, let's get another one out of the way, uh, that, that's not me. Uh, that, that can't happen for me. Bob Miller asked me to get a, the Kings a goal. That's one for you, Robert. You mentioned dropping the gloves and going up. That wasn't a big part of your game. But research shows that you had two fights in your career. Would that be right? That would be right. One of them, I think you did the game. To bring him back, tell those stories, talk about the personalities, which, you know, we don't get to do much anymore. And I was going to ask why you would fight Daryl Sutter's brother, Brent. I'll tell you why. And I didn't throw any punches. <laughs> that was old time hockey. That was old time broadcasting. and. It brought me to another place that we were trying to recreate. Now Tanner Pearson puts it in the goal about knocked away. The rebound, they score! Jeff Carter bangs home the loose puck, and it's 2 0 To start the third period, the broadcast booth brought out a surprise for Jiggs, thanking him for 50 years of memories. We have something special for you now, Jiggs, because we were just talking about it. 50 years in a row where you've done at least one game, 50 years in hockey broadcasting, NHL. When they told me about what we were going to do before the game, I was kind of uncertain of how it was going to go. On behalf of the entire Los Angeles Kings and, and the National Hockey League, again, Jiggs is in the Hockey Hall of Fame. We're going to have a little, just a little toast here. Folks have no idea how many nights I was accused of drinking on the job. <laughs> and now, now it's coming to fruition. This is not something you see every broadcast, a toast. I mean, you don't see that, but you don't see a guy doing 50 years of broadcasting either. Congratulations once again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, get, keep that on ice, Jimmy. Don't, oh, don't, don't let I, that I, get I, too I, far I, away. <laughs> For the Kings, bringing Jigs back to the booth after 45 years was the perfect cap for their 50th anniversary. I've been so fortunate to work with guys that have built a reputation, earned a reputation, and been recognized for that hard work. The thing that sticks out for me with Jiggs is that he's unselfish. He makes it about the game and he makes it about the players. And I think that's what earns him a lot of respect. I want to thank the man sitting next to me. 50 years of broadcasting started with the Kings. I'm not going to say ends with the Kings yet, but Jiggs, thank you so much. Let's go for 51. Oh, there you go. Sounds good to me. I don't know that I have the words to describe in total what it meant to me, but it, it is just uh, you could say which of the Stanley Cup finals was your favorite. Uh, I have to eliminate that now. Th this was my favorite. That supersedes a Stanley Cup championship and a, and a trophy presentation at the end of it. That's just, that's the cherry on top of the icing on the cake.